Well, it's time to fly a solar bag and there's a couple of things you're gonna need. I always like to have two solar bags because one is great practice. If anything happens to it and you've created this command performance situation, you always have a second one to rely on. Second thing that you need, you always have to have um, string, right? It's always good to have a little bit of uh, tape to repair a little hole. And most important thing that you need, a big, huge open area like this. That's the only way that you're gonna be able to have success flying your solar bag. Did I mention you need one more thing? The sun. Now, the sun at all times during the day, not great. You're gonna see that you're really gonna want to fly your solar bag earlier in the morning. You want a cooler temperature on the outside and you want the maximum difference with the air inside the solar bag versus the surrounding air. So earlier in the morning, much, much better. All right, 25 foot bag, totally manageable with just one person. Nice big grassy area. I found that if you're using a gravel area like we have over here with the baseball area, it's easy to poke a hole in this. These are super, super thin. They have to be to give us the flotation that you're gonna want. All right, here's the first thing that you need to do. Throw out the solar bag. And now let's tie off one end of the solar bag. So you're gonna want to unroll it so that when you eventually get air inside, that it easily inflates. So take one end of the solar bag like this, and at the very end, a simple overhand knot like that. All right, now, as you roll out the rest of this, try to keep it from folding and wrinkling, uh, twisting, that kind of thing on each other. And now you're gonna open up this end here. There's a little bit of breeze this morning, so it's gonna make it even easier to inflate it. So you notice, see how thin this is. It's gonna be easy to tear it if you're not careful. Look at this, just holding it open, I'm able to allow some air to be able to go inside. Now, one of the techniques that I've used in the past is this, is to hold on to it here like this and to slowly work that bubble of air down into the solar bag. So now it's much easier to inflate the rest of it. So if you work it down and take the time to be able to do that, you're gonna be able to see if there's any little tiny holes along the way and whether or not it's gonna be easy to inflate. This is gonna be really, really easy to inflate. Again, we have a small little breeze that's here and all I have to do is a little run with it like this. Ah, allowing the air to come down like this and now grab it here on the end and very carefully start to pull it so it's tight. Now notice this, this is really, really important. Before I do anything, look at the surface of the solar bag. It should be very, very shiny. If it's wrinkly, you know that you've got a hole. Look at it very carefully, and you're gonna feel in your hand that it's actually starting to, um, the, the, it's starting to expand. The air inside is getting warmer, so you don't wanna keep it super tight because we don't wanna break the solar bag, but at the same time, we really are looking for it to be nice and tight. Once you see whether or not it's tight, and it looks like it's holding air nicely, Give it a few twists on this end here. And now I'm gonna put a loose overhand knot in it like this so that I can easily come back and untie that. Now, without doing anything at all, notice that nobody holding on to the other end, we have buoyancy, right? The bag is beginning to float because the air on the inside is warmer than the air on the outside. So it's that buoyancy that's allowing that to be able to float up. You cannot let go. And let me repeat this again. Look directly into my eyes. You cannot let go. You know the danger of releasing something like this into the air. This is a 25 foot uh, object that could float in the air. Of course it could cause some FAA problems, but maybe even more importantly, it's easy for something like this to get caught in power lines. So do not let go. This is where it's great to make sure that you have your string right there. And very few times I would imagine you're ever doing this by yourself. So notice what I have here. I've got the string. I'm gonna wrap the string around like this a couple times, tie this off. Excellent. It's been my experience that if you successfully float your solar bag and get it back, that you're gonna lose the last little piece of it anyway because uh, you're gonna find little tears and so forth. So get a little bit smaller the couple times that you're flying it. But look at this, I'm not going to let the string out much at all. The whole idea is not to let it away and let it get away from you a couple hundred feet. The idea is to keep it completely under control. You can see that uh, what you're trying to do here, you're trying to get it to float and to see the buoyancy of the, of the solar bag. 
without pushing it up in the air or anything like this, we are totally getting that flotation. So it's powered only by the sun. Again, that expanding air that's on the inside, you want that to be expanded and uh, you want it to be warmer, of course, on the inside than it is on the outside. So one of the experiments you can try is to float this at different times during the day. Try something early in the morning, try something at noon, try something a little bit later in the evening and you'll see what you're gonna have best luck with. I can tell you that we've had best luck with uh, the morning because of the colder temperature and the fact that the sun is really shining down on it, but it's a great experiment for you to be able to try. You'll notice that in a um, backyard setting that this was easy to be able to fly. I didn't need to have this huge uh, area here for just that single bag. If you, were happen to, if you happen to float two of these at the same time, then of course you wanna give yourself more than enough room. The most important thing is to keep it under control at all times. You wanna know how people pop the solar bag? I'll show you, watch. It's going to be exciting. There's going to be people who are going to gather around. There's going to be kids who are going to be so excited to reach out and touch. What you have to realize right now is the bag is extremely hot. While you can't see that here, I can tell you that as you bring this back in again and you touch the surface of it, it is extremely hot. That means it's very, very easy for little fingers, especially with fingernails, to reach up and not even intentionally trying to pop it, to touch it and to poke a hole in it. If for any reason you were to get a little tiny hole in it, the, the scotch tape that I showed you before, it's easy to be able to just put a little piece of scotch tape over it and to, to save your solar bag that way. But little kids who touch it inevitably pop it. So the best thing that you can do is just to have people stand around and watch it uh, or use one bag as your learning bag as all the kids kind of gather around because it really will pop. Uh, I have not had much success over the years having little kids hold on to it and play with it and then come back and try to fly it again because it seems to, uh, to get some, some holes in it. We know that we're doing great because not only have we floated the solar bag, but look at how shiny it is. Can you see the heat even coming off some of the bag area here? If you take a look at it, you can even see some of the, uh, the heat. It almost looks like a mirage, right, that's coming off right here. You're able to see just how much uh, solar energy that bag is, is holding on to and attracting with that black surface there. The secret here, very, very thin bag and, uh, and being able to trap that much air and being able to, uh, to allow that air to expand and inevitably be able to float. A great successful launch today. All right, let's bring it back in again. You're gonna be able to save the bag and do it again. The best way to be able to do this again is not to scrape this across any gravel or anything. You wanna make sure that we have the, uh, the grass that's here that can, uh, that it's nice and soft for it. I'm gonna bring it back in, make sure that it stays under control. And now I'm going to untie this part of the solar bag here. So holding on to it, you're gonna untie it be able to take the string off like this. And now this is where you need to be very, very careful because we're gonna allow the air to come out, but this air is extremely hot. And we wanna be able to allow this to deflate and not whip all over the place. So I'm gonna slowly let the air out like this, bring it in, slowly move it around, allow the air to come out. Again, being as careful as I can with it now grabbing this end. If you have somebody helping you, it's easy on that end to allow them to hold on to it. Look at how the air evacuates by itself and you've completely deflated it. Now, best thing that I've found is if you wrap it up very, very loosely like this, and you may have to let it cool down. We've been fairly lucky that it's cold enough uh, this morning that uh, the bag cooled down very, very quickly. I'm gonna wrap it up like this. So now it's not gonna be knotted. And I'll either take a pillowcase or another plastic bag and put this in to the pillowcase or the plastic bag. And now I've got a way to be able to save this for another launch, all right? Successful launch of the solar bag, big open area, the power of the sun to float this giant solar sausage. Have fun. What a great successful launch of the solar bag. And remember, the reason why you're gonna have scotch tape is so that if you ever get a little tiny hole in it, you're gonna be able to fix it with the That's not gonna get fixed. Just got a little bit of tape here. Should fix it. Henry, I'm gonna need some more tape. It's pretty close though. Could you go get some more tape, please? Just get that, get the kind that's like invisible. Hurry, it's getting hot out here. <laughs>